So in the issue of the life history of a cell comb, as we have discussed, there will be four different stages. And uh, the, the first stage is the X stage. Here you can see the images of the X of a bombix mori. So here you can see this is how the X of a bombix mori will be appearing. So there will be very small X will be the and these eggs are incubated under uh, that is the incubation means the period of uh, period during which the egg will be uh, de undergoing development and reaching the final size from which a larva will be coming out that is usually 10 to 12 days depending on the environmental condition around 12 days will be taken by the for the eggs to develop into a larva so the second stage is the larval stage. Here I am showing the picture of a larva also. So in the case of a larva, you can see that. So these are the larva of a uh, bombix maori. You can see that. It's a white in color. And there will be number of horns on the body. And there will be some spiracles also the so the after hatching the silkworm emerges as a tiny caterpillar or larva so this is very small and vulnerable means easy, easily get attacked so as it is growing through several larval stages molting molting means uh, in the so most of the larva there is a there, there is a type of shedding of the body skin that shedding of the body skin is known by the name molting so in this of so this uh, larva of the bombix mori also we can find this molting because uh, molting is a method by which uh, uh, larva is increasing its size so when larva is increasing its size the outer cover will be normally replaced by a new more flexible cover that process is known by the name molting and during this stage silkworm weed feed voraciously on the mulberry leaves here you can see that these are the mulberry leaves on which the silkworm is actually feeding on. So that is the second stage known by the name larval stage. Now, the larval stage is followed by next stage known by the name cocoon stage. Here you can see, I will also show you how the cocoon is appearing. See, this is how the cocoon, this is this uh, L white colored or some, but sometimes golden colored structure is known by the cocoon stage. So, cocoon stage, so once the silkworm reaches its full size and completes its final molting, it will be stopping eating and begins to spin a silk cocoon around itself. So, this is the material, this material by which it is producing this cocoon is actually the silk. So purpose of the silk is to produce that cocoon. So here you can see that uh, it is from this cocoon that we are removing the silk threads. So that's how the cocoon will be appearing. Silk is produced by two glands located in the silkworm head, which secrete the protein meaceous fluid that solidify upon contact. As in the iso spider also. Uh, when the uh, there are two silk glands here and these uh, glands are located at the front of the uh, larva from the anterior head of the larva there are two small glands are there and these glands will be producing a liquid protein so that liquid protein is what we call by the name silk so when that liquid protein comes in contact with the air it becomes hard into a silk thread so in the case of spider also it is like that when spider is producing the silk, it is liquid in nature. After producing, after coming out of the body of the spider, the spider will be stretching this liquid into a uh, thread-like structure. This is how the silk is actually developing in spider. A similar mechanism is also observed in the use of silkworm also. So it is a liquid when it is formed. So silkworm spins the silk thread around itself. In, in a figure 8 pattern forming the protective cocoon and this spinning usually takes uh, 2 to 3 days. Here you can see that. So this is a larva and larva is spinning the silk thread around its body. 
so within a period of two or three days the entire larva will be covered in a structure like this so this uh, finally it will be appearing uh, some uh, somewhat like this and this is what we call silk or cocoon so this is how the this stage is known by the name cocoon stage or we can also call pupa then here you can see an overview of how here it is the female moth is laying eggs on the mulberry leaves this is the adult uh, moth and and this uh, moth uh, egg will be developing into a larva larva is gradually increasing in size and undergoing several shedding or replacement of skin or molting then the larva will be undergoing will be spinning threads around its body which we call pupa or the uh, cocoon and from the cocoon after a period of growth the adult moth will be coming out and this is the adult moth which will be again undergoing mating and fertilization and repeating the cycle so this is how the normally uh, the the silk worm um, is uh, undergoing its life cycle so inside the cocoon the silk worm undergoes metamorphosis transforming into a pupa and during this stage profound physiological changes occur as larva develops into an adult. so here you can see that there are uh, this is the larva when larva is uh, this is the shape of the larva whereas this is the shape of the adult uh, silk worm so from this uh, organism is converting into this organism lot of morphological physiological and other changes has to take has to take place and that process is what we call by the name metamorphosis conversion of a larva or transformation of a larva into an adult moth is known by the name uh, metamorphosis so a larva will be first converting into pupa from pupa it will be converting pupa is actually a passive state inactive state there is there won't be any movement so this process of metamorphosis usually takes two weeks to three weeks and uh, the purpose of cocoon is that it is acting as a protective covering for the developing so since it is covered or enclosed in this capsule like covering the larva as well as pupa is well protected here you can see almost like the uh, capsule of a uh, so that is how the larva will be appearing and larva will be undergoing metamorphosis to form the adult so once metamorphosis is complete adult silk worm moth emerges from the cocoon and the newly emerged moth is often soft and weak with underdeveloped wings here you can see the once the uh, larva um, uh, um, pupa is developing and uh, fully formed this capsule will be broken and from the capsule the broken capsule or broken cocoon you can see that a adult uh, silk worm will be emerging coming out and 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 that that mouth will be very weak that means very weak means its wings will be very soft so that it won't be able to fly for some time so only after a period of uh, 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 a uh, period of time the adult silk worm will be active and will be able to fly so that is the case in all insects also so the newly emerged moth is often weak and soft with under developed under developed means not properly developed or not suitable for a flight the primary purpose of adult moth is reproduction after emerging or adult moth seeks a mate or a partner and typically emitting pheromones to attract the potential uh, partners so in the use of this adult moth they have will be producing certain scent molecules and these scent molecules are very very powerful and very much species uh, uh, restricted that is it will be only producing a particular b type of behavior in another member of the same species so that is on a species species specific pheromones or scent molecules will be produced which will be attracting male and female to each other and resulting in the reproduction or and finally development of the egg so this is how the the mating process occurs soon after and female moth lays eggs to initiate the new generation so in their life cycle of silk worm from egg to adult typically spans 6 to 8 weeks so within a period of 4 2 months the life cycle of an earth, a silk worm is usually complete 
so it is a it is having a very shorter life span, life span you can see that so that is also an advantage for the farmer that is within a period of two months he can complete he can get the cocoon and he can also get the enough silk for for that industry for his industry so depending on the environmental conditions such as temperature and humidity the intricate intricate means very complex life history has been carefully cultivated and utilized for thousands of years in the production of silk so that is why people are using this kind of uh, worm for the silk production because it has shorter lifespan so that it is more easy to domesticate and cultivate that is why people are using silkworm for several thousands of years for producing silk.